All right. So we apply powerful tool mathematical induction. Okay. Yeah. I just recall, you know, we complete step one, base case verification. And step two, we need to make induction assumption. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So here, yeah, I just another recall. Yeah, induction assumption. Yeah. How do we make the induction assumption here? Okay. Yeah. Assume that the formula is true for k between two and n. Yeah. So here in this range, assume assumption. Yeah. So that's assumption. Okay. Yeah. All right. Why, why we can make that assumption? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Induction assumption. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, remember, we F two is true. We already check it, right? Yeah. F three already true. We also check it, right? Yeah. So although we treat as redundant thing, yeah, redundant thing, yeah, actually, yeah, uh, actually, uh, yeah, because here we can modify this range from zero less than k less than equal to n, uh, for n greater or equal to one. How about that? Yeah, because if we do this modification, that when when n equals one, when n equals one, k equals zero or one so that corresponds to the base cases yeah. when n equals to one it corresponds to the basic base cases we know it, it's correct okay it's correct all right yeah that means we do not need to do f2 f3 checking f2 f F3 checking, not necessary. Okay. F2, F3 checking, not necessary for this version of induction assumption. This version. Yeah. For this version, not necessary. Okay. For this version, it is necessary. All right. Yeah. For this version, Two between two and n, it's necessary, yeah. Because if you do not check f two, if you do not check f two, then your assumption could be empty. Yeah. No such k could make it true. Could be empty. Yeah. So for this version, this version. F2 checking necessary. Yeah. Try to follow the logic because here we, we are doing some rigorous math. So you may wonder so why, why we need to consider so much details because we want to do rigorous math, all right? Rig, rig, rigorous math. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So that's the induction assumption. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Here. Yeah. So this formula is part of the, this formula is part of the, yeah, I need to erase a little bit. 
Yeah, so the Fibonacci formula, but this time I write the version. Yeah, so yeah, here I I write yeah right here. Okay, yeah. All right, we write this version. Okay, yeah. All right. Okay, yeah. So when k in this range, based on our assumption, it is correct. Yeah. And this assumption is reasonable, not ridiculous, because we did the checking. Okay. We are we did the checking. All right. But why we said that checking on uh, I said before uh, the ch checking for F2, F3 as a as our practice practice means we do not have to do these two yeah in order to avoid checking f2 f3 we can change our induction assumption to this case then we can avoid unnecessary checking okay so this version we can avoid unnecessary checking okay yeah 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 because based on the original induction uh mathematical induction we we only need to check the base cases yeah f to f3 they are not the base cases so we do not have to check them yeah all right yeah so that it's it's okay we just to modify our induction assumption a little bit yeah. then the last step that's the most important step the hardest step yeah because usually the first two steps very easy yeah we don't worry about the first two steps the most difficult one is step three yeah we need to verify that f sub m plus one equals one over root five times parenthesis phi to the m plus one minus negative one to the m plus one over phi to the m plus one yeah parenthesis yeah because here yeah before i do the verification work let me explain a little more yeah because i just guess yeah because nobody give me any response so i go only i try to guess what you are thinking at this point yeah some of you may wonder you know what's the point to do the verification here what's the point because someone may argue, <laughs> some someone may argue, okay, argue in this way. How about make making k equals m plus one? in our mathematical induction yeah the answer is no you cannot do it all right you cannot do it it's illegal <laughs> you cannot do it illegal why because the reason is because out of range for k Only when k inside this range, you can make this assumption, okay? But now k m plus one, it's out of that range. How can you, how can you extend that assumption? How can you expand that range without any proof, all right? Without any mathematical, rigorous mathematical work, 
how can you extend that range? You cannot. Okay, that's illegal. All right. Yeah. But here, we want to extend that range. We want to extend that range. But if you extend that range, you need to prove it. Prove it. Prove it. Prove that you can do it. You can do it in a legal way. The previous way you just replace K by M minus one, that's the illegal way. Because you didn't provide any rigorous mathematical work here. Okay. And to complete that work, that is our step three of mathematical induction. That's the point. That's the step three, the hardest step of the mathematical induction. So we need to do it. Okay. All right. So the, for the remaining time today, let us do that verification. Okay. Yeah. Quite some work, a lot of work we, we need to do. Okay, all right. So let's start formula transformation. Okay, yeah. pretty complicated. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Yeah. And when we start, we start with this formula. That's legal, right? Because it is given. This recurrence regulation is given. So this step is legal. So we do not worry about it. Okay, yeah. All right. Then first Fn, we can use this formula. Why? Why we can use why we can use, use this formula? Because k equals n. This is in the range, right? Remember what is the range? The range between two and n. Okay. No. Actually, you can change the two to zero. It's fine. <laughs> you can change two to zero, it's including the base cases. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. All right. Between zero and n, between zero and n, you can apply this formula by mathematical induction. Okay, all right. And the second one, you apply this formula another time, but this time k equals m minus one, also in the range, right? So that's legal. So these two induction assumption application, both legal. Yeah, so that's correct. Okay, all right. Then, our goal, what is our goal? Okay, what is our goal? Our goal, yeah, so here we, we do simplification. Yeah, these two, I just factor out a common factor one root five and put a, you know, all the four terms inside one big parenthesis. Yeah, all right. Yeah, all right. Here, yeah, the goal, yeah, before I do further, the goal we want to verify because remember our goal is the right hand side equals replace k, extend the range, right? Replace k by n plus one, but we know that replacement should be proved. All right, yeah. So, so we need to prove the left-hand side expression exactly equals, uh, sorry, the right-hand side, right-hand side, this whole thing exactly equals the this left-hand side expression. We need to prove it, okay? We need to prove it. 
All right. Yeah. Yeah. Prove it. Oh, sorry. Minus, not plus. Yeah. yeah. Because I write it here. Okay. We need to prove it. All right. Yeah. To prove it, let's compare. Yeah, because one over root five, that's the same. One over root five. So we can ignore one over root five. We just compare that big parenthesis. Yeah. Everything inside that big pair of parenthesis. Yeah. Then the integral terms, integral terms, they have the same type of structure, right? The, you know, power function uh, or polynomial function. You can call polynomial function. Yeah. That, that kind of structure. And the fractional part, fractional part and the fractional part should, they have the similar structure, right? So they should match. Integral part, they should match. So we can make our reasonable guess. We want to verify the integral part should match. That means this equality. The fractional part should match. That means this equality. How about that? Yeah. So here, these two just our guess. Okay. Yeah. If you ask me why there are two, we need to verify it. Yeah. Here in our mind, before we do verification, we need to know what we are going to do. Otherwise, we do not have the direction to go. Yeah. So this guess is our direction to go. Okay. Yeah. All right. But we need to address, we need to answer why the first one is correct. Why the second one also correct. Okay. Yeah. If we can do answer these two questions, then we complete the whole verification. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. To do that, we start with our property number two. Remember in the previous slide, we have two properties for the golden ratio. Yeah. This is the second one. Second property. Okay. Phi square equals phi plus one. Yeah. Now let's work on this property. Yeah. It's correct. Okay. Yeah. So we start from this correct equality. Yeah. Then we multiply some power of phi. Yeah. The same power of phi, both sides of this equality. Yeah. When we multiply what power of phi, we can get phi to the n plus one. Okay. That is, you can see that is phi to the n minus one. Phi to the n minus one. If we multiply that power of phi, we can get phi to the n plus one. But at the same time, right hand side, we also need to multiply phi to the n minus one. So the first term becomes phi to the n. The second term becomes phi to the n minus one. Yeah. That's exactly match, matches what we guessed before. Okay, yeah. That means our guess is correct. Yeah. So this is a proof. Yeah. yeah. This, this is the proof, okay? All right. How about our second guess? We need to verify it, right? Yeah. So the first guess is correct. Uh, oh, the first one uh, is verified, all right? The second one, how to verify this one? Okay, yeah. So this time, yeah. This time, we need to use the backward thinking. Yeah. Because it is a little more complicated than the first equality, the second equality, 
more complicated. So we want to make the second equality as simple as possible. Then we can apply some property of the golden ratio to verify it. Yeah. So before we transform this relatively more complicated form, it's hard to apply our golden ratio properties directly. So for that reason, so we do backward thinking to make this form simpler. Okay, all right, yeah. First, can we remove the, that negative one part? Negative one part, uh, quite annoying. Yeah. We feel, you know, if we attach some power of negative one, it's quite annoying, okay? Can we eliminate the negative one part in this formula expression? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, oh yeah. First, uh, I changed. Uh, I removed. I removed the denominator part by mul multiply common denominator. So, yeah, the common denominator v to the n plus one the common denominator, right? common denominator, okay, you multiply both sides of that equality to be, because we need to verify it, we use backward thinking, all right, yeah, so, then, so the first round simplification, so we treat this as the first round simplification, we remove the denominator part by multiplying common denominator, appropriate common denominator. The second simplification step, we try to remove the negative one annoying term, or you know, form, yeah. So how to remove that? Let us multiply negative one to the n minus one, both sides of this form. So we get one equals phi squared minus phi. Yeah. Can you see that? Okay. Can you see that? Left hand side, because it, it would become negative one to the two n. That's one, right? Two n is an even number. So that's one. Then for corresponding to the first term at the right hand side, negative one to the two n minus one, that's an odd number. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, because, oh, yeah, this one, phi, yeah, because that one corresponds to phi. So that is an odd not, uh, negative. So that means the sign for phi is negative. The sign for second one, negative one to the two n minus two, another even number, right? So this is for phi square, so that's positive. That is for the square term. Yeah, so that is the simplification. As you can see, yeah. After we do two rounds simplification, we get this form. But this is the first property of golden ratio, right? The first property, one equals phi squared minus phi. And then we know it's correct. All right, so we check it. Correct. Then by backward thinking, then our, you know, uh, previous equalities all holds by backward think by equivalent, by equivalence of our formula transformation. Okay, equivalence of our formula transformation. So all correct, okay? 
So then that means the whole verification is correct. The whole verification is correct. So we complete, we complete mathematical induction procedure here. We complete it. That's the whole story. Okay. Although a little complicated. Yeah. So think about if you can follow the whole proof, yeah. if you can understand all the details in our proof, okay, try your best to understand. Yeah. Here uh, for this class, uh, just let you know uh, you are not required to apply mathematical induction to do any proof for this class, okay? Yeah, I do not give you any such problem because uh, it could be too hard for you, <laughs> yeah. But I, at least I give you one such question in my lecture to let you see what is the complete procedure by applying mathematical induction to prove some, to verify, verify or proof. Yeah. So you can use, you know, both ways, some result, you feel it's correct. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I just show you once. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you, uh, you need to try your best to understand uh, this procedure yeah. because if in future in your real world applications you may have the similar situation then you know you should do it in this way okay yeah just let you know yeah. uh, when you guess something yeah think about this if you guess some formula, but you do not know if it's correct or not, yeah. you can do some experiments for the verification, but experiments cannot be treated as a proof, right? Yeah. So experiment just give you more confidence. So your guess is correct. In order to prove your guess is really correct, then you need to do some rigorous proof work like this one here, okay? That's the point I want to convey here today, all right? Yeah, otherwise, uh, other than that, other than that, you do not need to worry about if you need to write a rigorous proof like the one here, uh, no, yeah, for this class, uh, I do not require that okay all right yeah so the verification is done the next